sabe. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson, which will be bringing you the message today and just have a few messages. Just uh, we want to put out here before we get started. And um, we do have um, the churches of Christ, the church of the Christ. Uh, for whatever reason, this um, this uh, false teacher, uh, Javier, as well as uh, Henry and and Ozan, these these guys um, feel that they um, somehow still teaching the truth. But as I said, and I made myself pretty clear on what I was telling them, because I said for them to sit there and to talk about people 
as well as myself and not talk about or teach where we err, but you, they go on to talk about people and not doctrine. What reason do I have to speak with them? Because he made accusations about myself. He don't know me as well as I don't know him. And he made statements about the people that listens over here. And so when he made that statement about the people that listens over here, he made statements about my wife, my mother, my kids, my relatives, a lot of the friends, a lot of the family for him to make such idiotic statements. And as I told him, and as I told the person that was um, mediating that, is that we're going to make sure his doors are closed because one, he teaches false doctrine. That's one. But two, he continues to try to push lies, which it makes no sense. And the same thing is, as we continually go through, the best thing to always do when anyone sit there and they say somebody is a liar, <clears throat> and it's based on doctrine there's no reason for you to go after the person you go after the doctrine <clears throat> excuse me you go after the doctrine never after the person as what we do as what we do we're not going after you personally we're going after your doctrine but this shows what kind of people they are because they throw rocks at people and not at the doctrine they just say they these we are liars, but they won't say what we lied about, and they can't show it. Or what they say they do, they go in the back area and then they break down what I do. And everything you're gonna see what I be doing, which I'm gonna put um Henry Stevenson, one of the bigger leaders. I'm gonna put him on one of my bigger platforms. So I know Javier, he um got kind of popular, and we received over. 1500 emails by people thanking me for exposing them. And many of them over 90% of them was from people av who used to attend or still attend. And now they said they got confirmation on why they should leave the church of Christ. And the worst part is this and the same thing. I'm still trying to hold one person back because there's a couple of people who used to sit over there with Henry and them at the church that he pastor at where they wanted to um, come on live. And they also made a video that actually demeaning him in many different ways. They, always, they get in his doctrine, but then they also talk about some things he do behind the scene. And I said, that's not the purpose on what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. We just want to expose people to show that these guys are false teachers nothing more nothing less but if they continue i will get that person the platform and if he sit there and he he want to find out about who that person is because they said they will come on live and they will show exactly who he is but one of the main parts is this as well as he do as well as many others people love teaching against this man called Jacob. This is what I don't understand. And what we doing here, we want to get a lot of that straight because a lot of this here, it makes no sense. People seeking to be saved. People want to be saved. They want salvation. However, They'll tell you they saved through the blood of Jesus. They'll tell you they saved through the blood of Christ. They tell you all kinds of things. And the first thing come out of their mouth, they teachers, they pastors, they say Jacob was a trickster. Some say Jacob was a deceiver, even though one of the same It's one of the same. Trickster is just something that is modernized, but the deceiver is the same thing as a trickster. And this is what I couldn't understand. And the same thing is, 
with the Church of Christ. They hold to the same ideology, which I'm going to show you what's going on, and then we're going to start going into this doctrine. Get out, get out on radio audience. This is the Unadulterated Truth Radio Broadcast Program. My name is Stephen Ozan. I will be also uh, working with Brother Javier Frias, uh, Brother Henry Stevenson has uh, visited the Salem Circle Church of Christ and New Congregation in Fort Worth. Your mind, what's revolving around in your mind? Is there God in this in the mind? Or is it as Esau? At one time Esau said, when my father dies, I'm going to kill Jacob. That was in his mind. But he fixed it. And see, you know, Esau gets a bad rap because he is a bad guy. But the problem is, is that Esau does make some adjustments along the way. He forgives Jacob. And when Jacob tries to offer him an extremely large amount of gifts, he tells him, keep it, brother, I got plenty. So he squashed it. But Jacob has that guilt on him. Oh, no, nah, man, I got no nah, because I shouldn't have tricked you out of this. And so, hey, look, man, take it. So Esau took it. He didn't go, I'm not going to take it that you may suffer with guilt. No, he took it. So he makes some adjustments. He makes some adjustments in life, you know. So we see here again, he, and that's one of their members over there. That's one of their elders over there saying Jacob tricked Esau. And not understanding people, and this is not just the Church of Christ, but even though they're part of the Church of Christ, but as a whole, as a whole, you have many Christian churches teach that. Not just them, but many churches teach Jacob was a trickster he was a deceiver and now he upheld Esau you guys see that and not knowing what Jacob name actually mean and Jacob means Sir Planner which we're going to find out a little bit later Jacob don't mean trickster nor trick or he tricked Esau in any way shape or form but people will sit there and say that's what he did and many people don't even know <clears throat> even why he was named Jacob or the reason why Jacob actually grabbed the heel of Esau. These things we're going to get together. We're going to learn today and find out a lot of things about Jacob himself. Because this is one of our forefathers and he's a highly important piece and has a lot to do with us to receive salvation. So all we'll be learning the importance today. So I need to make sure that we have these understandings here in place. And on top of that, I want to make sure that even with the churches of Christ and Ozan and Henry and Javier and those guys over there and any Christian church that has taught to sit there to say that this man was a trickster. They don't know they blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. They don't know they're doing that. But the Bible is clear on what happens when you do this. And we're going to look at that as we dig more into what needs to go down. So I'm going to invite you over. We're going to look at this over here. We're going to look at Matthew. I want you to go to Matthew. And we're going to look at 12 and 32. And this is anybody who want to understand if you sitting in churches anywhere in the world and they tell like telling you that Jacob was a trickster. He was a deceiver. I'm going to tell you now, you hold to it. See, many people don't know that they blasphemed against God. But we're going to find out because you can blaspheme against me. You can call me whatever you want to call me. And all that will always be forgiven. But when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, those things are not forgiven. And we know this man was Jacob. We're going to see something in Matthew chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 32. We're looking at it right here where I got it highlighted. It says, and whosoever speaketh against a word against the son of man. Now the son of man is talking about really anybody. You speak against him. You speak against flesh. It shall be forgiven him. You're going to always be forgiven. When you come to the truth and you can straighten it out, 
you will be forgiven. Same as it comes to what they did with Jacob. But it says this. It says, but whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Meaning you can close your Bible up, fold it up. You can burn it up. You can give it away. You can do whatever you want to do. But that is a wrap because when you saying that that certain man was a trickster, we're going to find out you was talking against the Holy Ghost. And you're going to see this as we go through the scriptures that anybody who taught that they can close their Bible up. Whoever it was, they can literally close their Bible up in Mark chapter three and verse 29. It says this, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. So they can say whatever they want to say from that point. That will never be forgiven. See, and this is where people sit there and they're trying to say, oh no, I'll be forgiven. No, it's telling you right here in the scriptures. And Christ is telling you this. It, that'll never be forgiven. So people can say, well, I, I, I did this, this way. I did, well, no, I should be free. No, he's telling you, you will never be forgiven. Ever. Not in this world or the world to come. Anyone who taught that this man, as we go through, because we're going to see some stuff about Jacob that we really, it's really important for us to know these foundations about what's going on here. Because blaspheme, see, blaspheme is this. And the main, main thing, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page as we go through. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Blaspheme is slander. You, they slander something. Speaking evil of. They saying as this Christ rested on his man, <clears throat> that this, this right here, he was a blasphemer. That's insult. That's dishonored the Holy Ghost on who that rested on. So we need to see that the Holy Ghost or Christ rest on this man they call a trickster. Then one saying, this is a liar, blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Who have no forgiveness in this world, the world to come is this man that they call Jacob. In Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. We're going to look at this. It says, Jacob, this is who people call the trickster. Jacob called his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you which shall befall. And we, we went through this teaching with, he's telling you what you're going to be up against. As you're going to journey through this world, he's making sure what you need to know. He said, what should befall you in the last days? But watch particularly what he says in this part here. The one they call the trickster. He says, gather ye selves together and hear ye sons of Jacob, including hearken unto Israel, your father. Now, this is the catchphrase. Just like I say, people sit there and know that he's talking about the spirit of God. But right here, he's still talking about when you want to look at it really on the on the on the on the level on what we need to see it. He's talking about, he's getting ready to speak of the spirit, which is in him, is why he was named Israel. That's what we need to know. That's what we need to really see. So that's why I said we got to go into this and find out what this man is talking about. We want to find out what he's talking about. So let me take you over here. We're going to look over here on the other side here. Because right now I'm running almost all the Bibles I want because I normally like to run with eight as when I study, but right now I'm able to run with seven. So I'm pretty, pretty happy today. Pretty happy. But we're going to look at Ecclesiastes, uh, Sirach. We're going to look at chapter 44. We're going to pick it up at verse 10. We're going to look at 44, but we're going to pick it up at verse 10. And that's where we're going to start right there. And it says, but these were merciful men whose righteousness have not been forgotten. 
these men's righteousness has not been forgotten. And to get some background on these men, these men found favor with God and, and he rested on them. The same as you'll see, even when you look at Moses and actually we'll see this over here. I got that right here, actually. So we got this running and that's why I'm saying that. But it says this in Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 45, verse one, it says he brought out him, <clears throat> brought out of him a merciful man, which found favor in the sight of all flesh. Even Moses beloved to God promised one of God is all the saying, whose memorial is blessed, whose memorial is blessed. These men just mentioned, and we'll see how Moses was blessed. Could you see Moses even appeared to Yahweh Shah, as some would say Jesus, and he had Peter and James and John with him. We're gonna look at that part also. We're gonna see this when you see Matthew chapter 17 and pick it up at verse three, and then we're gonna have a conversation. And it says, and remember, there appeared unto them, to who? To Peter, James, John, and Yahushai, Moses, and Elias, talking with him. It's telling you right up front. These men showed up because they memorial, and these was merciful, merciful men, and the Most High took care of these men. But it gets better than that. It gets better than this. Watch this. It says this. Then Peter answered, then answer Peter said unto Yahweh, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. So this moves a couple of things where people really kind of mix up. Because some people say, well, if I make it to heaven, will I know who people is? Will I know who this person, will I know who this one is? Okay, now we got to, I want you to clearly put this on your head. We talking about two different time frames here. That was talking in the Old Testament in the times of Moses, way back in Exodus. And now you're talking in the New Testament where Peter and him is there. How did Peter know he was Moses? How did Peter know he was Elias? And he had no images of him. You keep that in mind. <laughs> you keep that in mind. Now to show you the focus on why you would know people say you won't know them. So how, so the first thing you say, how did Peter know who these guys were? Cause Peter telling you clearly who they were. Cause he's telling you right away. Peter answered and said unto Yahweh. He said, should I make a tabernacle for Moses? How did he know that was Moses? And can differentiate which one it was. And how did he know who was Elias? How did he know that? So that's just another thing you can pose. How did he know this? Because the Bible don't tell you nowhere how he knew him. But that spirit let you know, if you are part of the same body, you can know this. That's, the, that's part of the point. Verse 11 over here, we're going to go back into Ecclesiasticus. We're going to look at verse 11 over here. And it says this. It says, with their seed shall continually remain good inheritance, including their children are within the covenant. This is making a clear point for us. So we need to focus more so on what the covenant is, because if you part of that inheritance, not the ones that you are going to be removed from the inheritance, but the ones who focus in on the inheritance, it's going to tell us something. It says their seed stand it fast, stand it fast things that is proven true, including their children for their sakes, for their sakes. It's going to mean that they're going to always be there. And it says, their seed shall remain forever, including their glory shall not be blotted out. Their glory is not going to be blotted out. This is making it all clear. But watch what happens in verse 14. It says, their bodies are buried in peace. That's a full thought here. That is a 100% full thought here. And in peace is telling you in rest and shalom. 
That's all that's saying. So when it's buried in shalom, it's buried in peace, it's buried in rest. It says this, but their name liveth evermore. And we know clearly what this is saying here, because now we know their way liveth forevermore. That's why it's saying that. The name, people say, well, no, that's saying the name. No, because we need to know the functioning of these words and how they work. This is why it, why it runs it this way. So, but their way, the way they live, they was merciful men. They was righteous. It's telling you this right up here. They was righteous. So if they were doing, practicing righteousness, that way will live forevermore because that's the way it's going to go. Those are the ones going to re, 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 uh, reap the inheritance on what was going on. That's why they was buried in peace. This is really straightforward here, but it's going to get a little hairy in a little bit. And it's telling us a little bit more here in verse 15. It says, the people will tell of their wisdom, including the congregation will show forth their praise. And the main thing we want to focus on again, as I said, you know, and, and I already know they, 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 they over here. We have people from Christ over here. We have a lot of them who came over here to see what's going on. And here we are to explain more so not to give you uh, uh, the strongest concordance of false lies on what stuff mean, because those are a bunch of men giving you stuff to turn you from the truth. But a praise is not sitting there telling my hallelujah, this and that. No, praise mean confession. That's what that means, praise. So that's why it says, in the congregation will show forth their confession. And we're going to see that on one person in a minute. We're going to see that in one person in a minute. And we're going to look at verse 17. We're going to see see one. Because you remember even Enoch, he, he made a confession that he pleased God. But we're going to see one thing in a minute. Enoch pleased the creator when he was translated. Meaning what? <clears throat> People would sit there and say he still living the day somewhere. He's walking around. Thousands of years old, he's walking around. That makes no sense. Because they're not understanding, again, the words that is in the Bible. We want to understand entirely. So when we go through the Bible, we wouldn't need to understand everything. So this is why we always have to make sure we do our due diligence and understand Bible-wise. The Bible, the King James Bible is a dictionary, a commentary, and a history book all wrapped into one. And once you know how to use it, It'll open your, your eyes to everything. Remove those scales from you. And translated, it's saying, what we're going to find out, it's saying, including was removed. That's all they're saying. We're going to find out more so with that. It says, being an example of repentance, of remembrance, is all they're saying to all generations. Why is it even saying it that way? Because it's telling you right here. It's saying, being an example of remembrance. Did not he say their glory shall not be blotted out? It's telling you this right here. It's telling you continually good inheritance. And their glory should not be blotted out. Why? Being an example of remembrance to all those generations. This is, uh, this is all it's saying in the, full, in the fullness of it. But the main reason why we want to focus on Enoch. And before we get into Jacob, because we're just seeing some examples here, but we're going to focus one little minute on, on Enoch. We want to understand some things on Enoch. Why he was removed, because it's saying he was translated. He was removed from the land of the living, being everybody above ground. And we want to know why. We want to know why. And let's go over here. We're going to look at our wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to show you something. We're going to look at Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to look at chapter 4. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4. And we're going to go to verse 10. And it's telling you something, which we, we all know what he did. As it's saying, that Enoch pleased the Creator. And it says that he pleased God. It's telling you right up front. He pleased God and was beloved of him, was promised of him, so that the living among sinners, he was translated. He was removed. See, this, what we do here, we show you precepts here. We 
We hold strong to that because the Bible tells us everything. I don't have to do a lot of explaining to, uh, to do anything, but that's what they would say to try to remove you from the truth. So they can pump a lot of stuff to you. They'll give you one verse and they'll talk for the next 45 minutes. And that's what they do over there. And we see this. So he was removed. And we're going to see why. Because Enoch was beloved to God. But we're going to see why. You, you see why, how you're you going to talk more about it. It says, yea, speedily was he taken away. He was removed. Least that wickedness would alter, shall alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. You see this? This, this is telling us exactly why he removed him. Because Enoch walked with God after he was 65. And then 300 years he walked with God. But for 65 years, it says he don't say he walked with God at all. You don't see that in scripture for his first 65 years of his life. You don't see where he walked with God. So we don't know what Enoch was in the world and what was he into. And it's telling you, should his understanding or deceit beguiled his soul. So we don't know what he was into because it's telling us right here, he could have went back to something that he was doing. In fact, um, let's look over here. Let's, let's pull something a little bit more. Let's pull a little bit more information. We're going to look at Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to go over here to chapter 4. So we can keep them all together. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. And it's telling us more so here. And you see here, we're showing all Bible. We're not, we're not going crazy. It says, because it would alter his understanding because of soul. It says, he who Enoch, being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time. So back there, you see people living 800 years and 900 years and 700 years and 600 years. He lived 365 years. So he was made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time. That's what it's saying. Enoch. But watch this. And you're going to go back to the same thing. For his soul pleased the creator. Again, he pleased God. For that reason, that he pleased God, hasted he to take him away from among the wicked, from among these sinners. You see, all this is just making all the sense. Over. So now we know he was removed for that reason. And he's going to tell you why. Again, what's going on. And you'll see what, what he says here. It says, this the people saw. So people saw this and understood it not. They don't understand why. He's probably sitting there. See, back there, you can sit there and they probably seen people who live those long five, six, seven, eight hundred years. That could have been the reason why they're saying that. Sitting there like, why? Dang, he only lived 365 years and he's dead. And they saw it and they didn't understand it. Neither laid up this in their minds. Why he was taken. But it says this, that his grace and mercy is with his saints. Including he had respect unto his chosen. He had respect unto to Enoch. He said, no, I'm not going to let Enoch get caught up. I'm going to take him away. I'm going to remove him. And he says this. Verse 16, he makes this clear for us. He says, thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living. <laughs> he switched it around. So the one living is the one being condemned and the one that dead is the one that, he, that he's protecting. He was in there like, wow, I didn't know it was like that. But this is what he's telling us. And he says, in youth that is soon per, uh, per, um, perfect, Perfected the many years of old age of the unrighteous. This is clear. Because he didn't want Enoch to get caught up with nothing. He didn't want Enoch to be caught up with absolutely nothing. That was his whole point of everything. Because many of us will sit there and we'll get caught up in this stuff. Being around all these crazy things and not really understanding what's going on. See, and you see this here where <clears throat> we get deeper into this as we look over here with Noah. 
And they tell you, it says Noah. We offer Enoch, but Noah was found perfect and righteous. In the time of wrath, he was taken. He was taken. But he went into the ark of God. So we're going to find out a little bit of history on that also. And he was taken in the ark of God, meaning this. So he was found righteous in the time of wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. For that reason was he left comparing a remnant unto the earth. So he was left. <clears throat> meaning he didn't kill him. He put him in the ark of God and then he trained him as with some of the others. And we're going to see that it says when the flood came, we need to understand that one. Also, we need to understand that as a whole, because when it's saying he was perfect, all that saying he was perfect, saying he was blameless. He was righteous. That's all perfect mean. Blameless, righteous. And he was removed from the unrighteous. And he was moved into the ark of God as the earth was overspread with doctrine before the floods came. It was overspread with doctrines. Noah being solid in doctrine, he was planted. And we, you'll see this here. We're going to look at a little bit more here. We're going to go over here and we're going to look at Genesis to get some better understanding here. Genesis, and we're going to look at chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. We're going to go to verse 19. Genesis 9, 19, and it says this. It says this about Noah. It says, these are the three sons of Noah, including of them was the whole earth overspread. It was overspread, flooded with doctrines. That's why I tell you this. When the flood came, the earth was overspread with doctrine. This is the connection that most people need to know. And that's why this is happening. So when the flood came, it was an overspread of false doctrine went out. False doctrine covered the entire earth. And that's when Noah became a husbandman, which it tells us in verse 20. It says, including Noah began to be a husbandman and he planted a vineyard. So that's telling you the same thing is the entire place was overflood and he became a husbandman. A husbandman is a teacher and planted a vineyard and the main thing is when he planted the vineyard, he drank of the wine. And it's telling you this right here. Telling us this right here. And he, when he did that, he drank of the wine. He drank of the wine and was drunken. Why? Because it was fermented. It was fermented. He drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered in a tent. He was drunken. Because once it be fermented, you won't walk straight. The reason, the main reason why Noah, and if you always pay attention, Noah blessed Shem. He didn't bless the other two. He blessed Shem. That's the one that was blessed. Shem. Not Japhat and not Ham. That's giving you the clearness on that there alone. In fact, um, to pull a little bit more, let's let's go over to Genesis one more part, then we're gonna go back over to what we're doing. We're gonna look at Genesis. We're gonna go to chapter nine. Genesis chapter nine, we're gonna look at verse eleven. And he tells you this. <clears throat> so it's something that we need to see with verse eighteen. So we're going to have this and we're going to hit verse 18 at the same time. And it tells us, it says, an everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by flood. It's no longer going to perish by flood. So that's why it says, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the knowledge of of a flood. This is, and you, and this is a full thought. This is the scariest part that we need to really understand. And I'm going to read the rest of them. We're gonna, I'm going to show you why this is so important. It says, Neither sh shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. The reason he's saying this, Neither 
shall all flesh be cut off any more by waters of a flood. This is this is crazy. The reason why I'm even telling you is crazy. That invokes Hebrews 20, 10, 26. Once you come to the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. This is literally what he's saying. So he's going to make sure you hear what the truth is and he's going to hold you to it. Just because you have pleasures in unrighteousness, he's going to make sure you're going to hear what the truth is. No matter if you into all this false doctrine, he's going to make one point or another. He's going to make sure you hear what the truth is. And if you don't adhere to the truth, he's sitting there saying, you're not going to be destroyed because you didn't have no knowledge because you had knowledge of it. That's what he's saying. So wickedness is going to increase based on that, on the flood. Wickedness is going to increase. We're going to see some of this as we go through here. And as this continually, we see, let me see, you know, I can't type and talk at the same time. I'm not good as the women who do some of those things like that. But we're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 10, and then we can pick it up. So, but most people don't know what, when you sit there and you're teaching false doctrine, you're going to get caught up. And that's why I want you to understand with these examples, what we're doing. It says, because even because they have seduced my people saying peace, they'll tell you all you have to do, believe, be baptized and they go on to one of them and believe on him and that he died. You are saved. you got peace. It's not the truth. That's a bold-faced, unadulterated, low-down, dirty dog lie. That is a 100% lie. Because they're going to tell you, then you have peace. You guarantee a seat in the kingdom just on that alone. And we just went through a lot of stuff already. If you go back through it, you'll see exactly why it's saying that. And they're saying peace. And they destroy it. For the, he said, you seducing them saying peace. That y'all have peace. And he says, and there was no peace. There ain't no peace. He said he came not to be friends, not to do all these things. He said, I came here with a sword. I came here to divide. And he says, including one build up a wall, including low, others dabbed it with untempered mortar. But it gets better. Saying to them, which dabbed it with untempered mortar, he's making so he's making this clear that it shall fall. Your your walls gonna fall. Your building gonna fall. Your church gonna fall. It says there shall be an overflowing shower, including ye, O great hailstones shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. But it gets better. It gets better. He's going to ask you a question here. He says, Lo, when the wall is falling, shall it not say, shall it not be said unto you, where is the dabbing? Wherewith you had dabbed it? Where is it? The 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 solidness that you had, the doctrine, the 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 what you said, you said it was gonna stand. Where is it? Where is the building now? Where's your doctrine now? Where's what you stand on now? Where's your foundation now? That's what he's saying. Where is it? In fact, he says this. Thus said the Spirit of God. He's telling you out of his own mouth. I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, including there shall be an overflowing shower of my anger. He's going to be whooping you with truth. That's what he's going to be doing. Whooping you with truth. Anyone teaching contrary to what the doctrine is in the Bible. He says a great hailstone in my fury to consume it. That's why he said, I ain't going to destroy it no more. I'm going to make sure you get the truth. I'm going to make sure you get the, I don't care what you into. I'm going to make you get some of the truth. And as you get the truth and you do something wrong with it, I'm going to hook you up. That's what he, that's literally what he's saying. I'm going to hook you up. In fact, he's saying this. Most people think Noah <laughs> went another way, but we, we're going to look at something. We're going to go to Psalms and we're going to look at chapter 66. 
we're going to look at 66 and find out something about that. 66, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. And you'll see here what happened with Noah now. It says, he turned the sea into dry land. See, people say, well, he dried it up. That ain't what they're saying. You already see, he said, he turned the dry sea, he turned the people into dry land. So he let them know what happened. He said, they went through the flood on foot. You can look at this all day long. The Red Sea is not a flood. So don't try to tie this to the Red Sea because the Red Sea is not a flood. You can go look anywhere you want to and you're not going to see the Red Sea was a flood area. It's saying they walked through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. So that's what we need to figure out. That's the main part we need to really get and understand. In Psalms chapter 78, verse 13, it says this. Psalm 78, 13. And we're going to see something. We're going to look at a little bit more here. Because this is what he's talking about. He divided the sea, <coughs> excuse me, including caused them to pass through. And he made the understandings To stand as the heaps. Get you over to those crackers. This is what's going on. He divided it. So it wasn't no flood. But wickedness increased. Wickedness was increasing. And as it is today. Even today, wickedness is as every time, every century, wickedness increased even more. It just keep increasing. It keep increasing it increases and increases the more and more and more that's what it's doing it's increasing more upon the earth and the same thing the wickedness <clears throat> excuse me it comes in where wickedness increase and then we get into where we get to abraham's father because it increased crazy it just kept increasing joshua talked on that and he was talking about how that wickedness was increasing And we're going to see how Joshua, he even speaks on this in Joshua chapter 24. And we're going to see this in verse 2. Because Joshua spoke on this same identical thing on some of the issues that was going on. It says, And Joshua said unto the people, Thus said the Spirit of God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood. You see what it's talking about? On the other side where all this doctrine was, all this craziness was going on. It says this, In old time, even terror who is Abraham's father. It says the father of Abraham, including the father of Nahor. And they served other gods. They were over there where all this craziness was. Think about that. He's Joshua talking about this. Well, all this craziness is going on <clears throat> and we have to deal with it. So Joshua spoke about Terah, the father of Abraham, Nahor, serve, talking about serving other guys. But it says this in verse 3, it says, And I took your father Abraham, because it's speaking in the position of Christ, and that's why you see it in red anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood of all this craziness and led him through a land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. You see how you building this up? Gave him Isaac. And I'm going to show you this to make sure we all on the same page. I'm going to show you this to make sure we all on the same page. In Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. In verse 1, he, he says this to Abraham. And Abraham at the time was named Abram. At the time, he was named Abram. It says, And the Spirit of God said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred, including from thy father's house, Unto a land which I shall show thee. And he's telling them right there. Where he he told told him he gonna get him out of there. That's how he did it. And Abraham left. In fact, it get more so. It says, So 
Abram, he departed. But we need to find out a little bit more here on what's going on over here in verse 3. And Joshua goes down more into it. It says, And I took your father Abraham on the other side and led him through throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. This is where it's going to get really, and we're going to start making sure that I need to make sure, even everybody, you start making sure you write this down. Because if you're not writing this down, you're going to really start to write a lot of this stuff down now. Because this is going to help you do your research as you study the precepts in the Bible. It says, including I gave unto Isaac, Jacob. Now we're getting ready to where we're going to start getting into the, the nitty gritty of most things. And it says, and his children went down into Egypt. So it's saying, Jacob and, the, and Esau, I gave unto Esau Mount Seir. And the main thing I want to make sure, if we understand something as a whole, when it's spoken, actually in Paleo Hebrew, when it says it, this format right there. I want to tell you what it played, what it's actually saying. That's why. I want to show you what this is actually talking about. So when you see it in this format, like you see right now, it's saying Esau Mount Seir. It's telling you a specific thing. So Seir or Mount can also mean place of. It can also go for pride. When you're looking for Mount. When you're looking at Mount. But when you see how he laid this out in Paleo Hebrew, the way it's structured out, this is talking about Pacifics. And it's talking about, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir. And he's talking about, he gave him, which Esau has a meaning also. Esau means what? Harry is covered. So it's covered. He gave unto Esau covered with pride to possess it. That's all he was saying. This is all he's saying here. And you'll see sometime. Actually, I'm going to tell you what better yet. Let's do this. Let's look at some examples. I'll do that boy. We're going to look at something. We're going to look at first Maccabees. This easier way for we can work it out. We're going to go to first Maccabees um, chapter six. And to give you an example, cause I wasn't going to do an example, but I think it'd be easier to do an example. We're going to look at 662. 662. And it says, it says, then the king entered into Mount Zion. Now watch how, watch how this plays out. This is the place, or we can also see this as pride, but we're going to see how this plays in this, in this realm here. Watch what, it, watch, <clears throat> watch what happened. It says, but when he saw the strength of the place, that's what we're just talking about, he broke his oath, which he had, which he had made, and gave commandment to pour down the walls round and about. We see what's going on talking about this mount in first Maccabees we're going to move up a little bit more and we're going to go to chapter 10 and look at verse 11 even make it a little bit more clear hopefully so for you and we'll see it says and he commanded the workmen to build the walls including Mount Zion you see this mount the place Zion roundabout square stones for fornication so this here is not talking about the place. This is actually put now in place. It's putting the pride. So now when you read it, it says built the walls, including the pride of Zion. That's what it's talking about. And it says in about the four square stones for fornication. That's what they really into. And it says, and they did so. That's what that's getting into. That's what that's getting into. So we really remember when we start seeing these things, we want to understand what they mean. Because same as olive, when you get into olive, it's talking about the fruits and the works. And Sinai talking about the covenant. You see people even name churches, say they call them um, 
uh, Grism or a Grism. They use something like that. I'm gonna just give you a few places on what you'll know what's happening. And you'll see when they do that, what they telling you, see Grism and you see uh, Ebo, these are talking about two different places. But they but they telling you functioning something behind that. And we need to know what those things are. So that's why when we get into teaching, I, I do more of that to where we can understand it. So once we start reading the Bible, you can understand what is happening. So this is what happened. So he gave Esau Mount Sire. Place of, talking about a place of pride. It was covered with pride. The best that's it. But Jacob, his children went down into Egypt. But verse 5, it says this. He sent Moses also in Aaron and plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them and afterwards brought you out. So he's saying what he did. After that, he did all that and he brought us out. He brought us out from that part. And now he's telling us because we were in Egypt and then he brought us out. So now as he's sitting there talking about all this stuff, what he did for Abram and all this, watch what he's talking about over here. We're going to pick it back up. Back at verse 19. We're going to pick this back up at verse 19. Right here we we dealing with. It says, Abram was, was a great father of many people. In glory was there none like unto him. Why? Because Abram was a, called him a friend of God. But none like Moses, none like Abram. And he was a great father to many, including the grandfather of the children of Israel including the grandfather of the children of Israel, who was Jacob. We're going to see this. So let's drop down to verse 20, because we're building up. we getting history on, on Jacob. And it says, who kept the law of the Most High, which most of them don't know what that is, because they're going to run you to Exodus. And it says, including was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh, including when he was proved he had to be tested and was found faithful. You see how he's doing this? He was found faithful. Who? Abram. I can show you many other examples where Abram was found faithful on everything that he did. Anything the most I told him to do, he he did it. There was no if, ands, or buts about Abram. We're going to look at verse 20, 21, and it says this. It says this, and we're going to get building up to, the, to, the, to, the, to this Jacob, who people call the trickster. It says, for that reason, he assured, and we want to know, actually, let me unhighlight this again. And I, I think I might start on unhighlighting to where I just want you to focus on certain words I want you to see. <clears throat> I want you to see this, and I want you to see this one. It's easy for me to do it this way, because I want you to know what I'm saying. So he's saying this. He said, Therefore, for that reason, he assured, he promised, it's like a guarantee, he promised him <clears throat> by an oath, by a bind. That's what he did. He binded something. It was bind on earth or a pledge. It was bind on earth, and guess what? It's bound in heaven. That's what, that, that's what that's talking about when you get over in the New Testament. Same thing. So he did that by a bind, B-I-N-D. That's how you do that one. And that's what happened. So his vow was made with the seed and he exalted him. And that's why I said, and will bless the nations in his seed that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed, comparing the stars, including cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the uttermost part of the land. That's what he did. That's what he did. So we have that. And when we get down to verse 22, he makes it a little bit more clear. He makes it a little bit more clear. It says, including made it rest upon the head of Jacob. You see that? So now we get into Jacob. We did all this to get to Jacob. Jacob, they call the trickster. <laughs> they call this man a trickster. He's a deceiver on what people call this man. And he acknowledged him, who? God. But God acknowledged him as a trickster. So what do that make you think of God? That's the point. 
That's what we're looking at. So it's saying he made the rest upon Jacob. He made that promise. Rest upon Jacob, not Esau. However, you see Christians and camps and many people teach that this man is a trickster. He's a deceiver. He's a deceiver. That's why he says, he says this and he makes sure this is clear. I'm just showing it to you again. He says, Verily I say unto you, I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the Son of Man, and blaspheme wherewith whosoever shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but in the danger of eternal salvation. So he's telling you. Including whosoever speak against the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And you see, it rested upon Jacob. That's why he's telling you this, and this is why I want you to focus on that. It rested upon Jacob. Now, how did we know it even rested upon Jacob? I want you to think about something. So what they did, they called God a liar. But I'm going to show you something. We're going to go over here and we're going to look at this. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 25. We're going to go to verse 21. And it says here, it says, Isaac entreated the Lord. Isaac. He entreated the Lord. Because his wife because she was barren so she she wasn't able to have children at the time so he entreated the lord and the lord was entreated of him and rebecca his wife conceived and she ended up conceiving but he gets better it's way better this because barren is just not able to have children that's what that's telling you and we're going to look at verse 22 it says this the children struggled together so once she became impregnated these children they struggled together within her and she said if it be so why am i thus she went to inquire into the spirit of god so she went to the spirit of god herself she wanted to find out what's going on she wanted to know what in the world is going on inside of me and the lord answered her and he said this the spirit of god said unto her two nations now you have camps going to teach there's one white and one black. That's crazy. It's all together. And then you have these people calling one person a trickster and one is not. So I want you to pay attention to why, why we're getting ready to get into a whole lot of crazy stuff. But we're going to find out all what's going on according to the truth because we're seeing nothing but Bible. And, it says, and he's telling it, two nations. It's telling you two bodies in there. That's why he's saying two nations, two people in there. You had two people in there. That's all he's saying in the whole. He says, two people, technically all he's saying, in that womb. Two manner of people. That's all he's saying. So it's two manners. And the two manners is why he's saying it in that particular way, because there's two manners of them in there. Because manner is conditions of things and behaviors on how people will act out. That's why he's saying two manners. Two different types of things. One going to be doing something one way. One's going to be doing something another way. So two manner of people. And it says, and shall be separated from their bowels, including one people. So it's talking about one of the children be stronger than the other people, be stronger than the other child. And they're saying the elder should serve the younger. And they're not getting that either. So we see in this here. <clears throat> now, he, now, this is the most important part we need to make sure you clearly understand. God himself is telling this woman, Rebecca, which one he's going to have, which one he already chosen before these children is even born. Paul reflected on this himself. Paul, Paul tells you this himself. <clears throat> and people call Paul a, a liar. But Paul reflected, I'm telling you, I'm telling you it, you can't make this up. You cannot make this up. And same thing, Paul reflected on this. We're going to see this in Romans chapter 9. We're going to look at verse 11. Right here. This is the one we want. 
It says, for children not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but him that called it. He's telling you right here. He's telling you right up front what ain't right here. What, what, what he's doing. We looking at Genesis. And now we're looking at the New Testament. We're looking at a letter of Paul. We're looking at these two different things. And watch what he says there in verse 13. It says, it was said unto her, the elder should serve the younger. He's telling her up front, this is what's going to happen. And he even goes on more. He says, as it is written, Jacob have I promised, Esau have I hated. The Most High is telling her, he's, he told Rebecca this. And we have in people telling you, Jacob's a trickster. If you don't see the seriousness in this, anyone sitting in these places where they teaching this, and you sit there, well, that's good. He got that off, but, but, but I'm still cool. I'm going to sit here. You deservingly so, when he sent you to hell, you deservingly so should go there. Because you're calling God a liar. You rightfully so should go to hell. That's why he says there ain't no forgiveness. He already told her this. He already told Rebecca something and you saying he tricked him. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't make this up. You seen it come out of his mouth. Now I guarantee you people going to sit there, well, he didn't mean, I don't care what he meant, he said it. And once he said it, many of them said it. Jacob's the trickster. You can't explain it no other way because that's what they call him. He's a trickster. Are we serious? And anyone sit under that kind of doctrine, deservingly so should go to hell. Deservingly so. Cause let me let me go ahead on before I before I get on a whole nother tangent. I <laughs> get on a whole nother tangent. Let's look over here now. At um Genesis. Let's look at Genesis. Let's go to let's let's look at it a little bit deeper. We're gonna go to Genesis chapter twenty-five. We're gonna look at Genesis chapter twenty-five. We're gonna go to Genesis twenty-five twenty-eight. Genesis twenty-five twenty-eight. What is it saying here? Oh, that's why. <clears throat> Genesis 25, 28. And this is what the whole issue is about. This is the whole issue. This is why they're saying Jacob was a trickster. This is why they're literally going to tell you Jacob tricked him. I'm just showing you the silliness that people use in Scripture. They use this to deceive you from the truth. And this is where they did it at. It says this. I'm going to go up to 27 just so we can see what's going on. It says the boys grew. Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. <clears throat> this is what this is all about. These two. But it says this. It says in Esau and Jacob and Isaac promised Esau. Isaac promised Esau. It said, because he did learn of his venison. <laughs> he learned of his flesh. He, he knew what his daddy liked. He learned of the flesh and his daddy, that's my boy. That is my boy. But Rebecca promised Jacob. I wonder why. Because the Lord told her something? The elder going to serve the younger? I, w I wonder, is that the reason why? 
that the Most High told her already what was going to go down. So this is the problem. Who promised who is the issue. Who got the promise? Who promised who? See, because Isaac promised Esau, Rebecca promised Jacob. This is, see, this is the problem. See, and this ain't the first time this happened. This is not the first time this happened. Abram had wanted the promise to go to Ishmael. Actually, we're going to tell you what, better yet. Better yet, let me let me just be calm, and we're gonna look at this all together. Let's look at this all together. We're gonna go to Genesis. We're gonna look at uh, verse seventeen, chapter seventeen, Genesis chapter seventeen. We're gonna look at verse eighteen. We're gonna look at this together, and we're gonna go through it. And they tell you, Abram said unto God. Abram said unto God that Ishmael might live before thee. So you can't make this up. I'm telling you right there. He wanted Ishmael to go ahead. Hey, that's my first. Let him, let him, let him roll with it. Most high, let him roll with that. God had to get him straight again. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, should bear thee a son in works. You and her going to get together in works, and y'all going to bear a child. And it says, including thou shall call his name Isaac. I'll tell you what you're going to name this child. And he said, I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, including with his seed after him who was Jacob. You see here, and the same as Isaac wanted it to go to Esau. But before they was born, God already had chosen Jacob. So Rebecca feared this. See, Rebecca knew what was going down here. Just keep that in mind. She knew what was going down here. Because Rebecca feared the blessing was going to be given to Esau because she heard Isaac and hearing him talking to Esau that he was going to give him the blessing. That's what's going on here. So now we know a little bit what's happening here. Let's, 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 let's go down in here. Let's look at this all together. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 27. Let's go to 27. We're going to look at this a little bit deeper now. Because we kind of know pretty much now we're just going to get a little bit more into what's going on here because we see what the foundation on what was happening. It says, and Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, remember, hey, Jacob, come here. Remember, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother. She's telling Jacob, I, I heard him speaking. Saying, what did he say? We need, we, 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 we just dropping in on the conversation. Bring me venison. Hey, Esau, bring me venison and make me savory meat. It ain't talking about that venison. He's talking about bread, which again, Christians get this screwed up because meat ain't talking about nothing but bread. He says, he said, cause you actually, we're going to tell you what, let me unhighlight it again. I keep, I apologize. So he said, make me venison. That's that deer including make me savory meat. Got to be better. You see the and there. So this is a say and cook it. It don't say that. It says make me venison, including make me savory meat. Make me some bread. That's all they're saying. And it says that I may eat and bless thee before the spirit of God before my death. That's what Rebecca heard. She, she heard him talking about this. So she went and told Jacob. So as that saying that we already know, she remembered what the spirit of God told her. One people should be stronger than the other people. The elders should serve the younger. 
She said that she knew this. She she's up front with that. She clearly understand that in the spirit of God telling her that. And as soon as first one came out was who was Esau. She know that's the elder son. You know, he ain't getting the blessing. The blessing goes to that, that one that's coming out Nazareth. But then she hear her husband talking to Esau. Yeah, you go get me that venison and and make me some savory bread. And before I die, I can bless you. She heard that. You know, no, no, uh -uh. no, no. We got to do something wrong here. So he was going to bless him before the spirit of God before his death. So Rebecca, she <laughs> she had to change gears. It says, and she's telling, mind you, she's talking to her son. She says, now for that reason. So she's saying, now for that reason, Jacob, my son. That's all she's saying. Jacob, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. So I'm going to tell you to do some things. I just need you to listen. I need you to do it. Because I don't need this blessing to go over there because I already know what the Lord doing. Now, who does she sound like doing? She sounds just like Sarah. Sarah brought, brought Hagar. She wanted to do something according to the flesh. Just keep this, just keep these two in mind. So she going to do something according to the flesh because she thought this blessing was going to go to Esau. The same as Sarah said that brought Hagar and gave Ishmael and then they had to get rid of the child. Same thing. But let's look at verse nine. And saying this, it says, go now to the flock. Fetch me thence two good kids of goats. Go get me two young goats. If what you want, them two good kids. You want two young goats. It says, including I will make them savory meat. So it says, so now, and she's going to go make the bread. You see, it's, it's separating everything. For thy father, which he loves. So whatever kind of bread that he made, he loves that bread. That, that Whatever kind of bread that is. That, you know, however she do it. And we already know it's unleavened, but however she made it, he he loved that bread. And it says, it says this, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, including that he may bless thee before he dead, before his death. So you know, we're going we're gonna to switch this. We're going to have you do this. And then before he pass, he going to bless you, not Esau. We don't need this stuff going down like that. Because I know what the Most High told me. She's, you, 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 you see when they, oh no, I know the Lord talked, the Lord told me, she, she inquired to the Lord and the Lord told her. That's how this was going to go down. Watch what happens there. Now, Jacob, actually I'll put this in red. Because Jacob, he's talking, Jacob said unto Rebekah, his mother, See, remember, remember, mom, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Hey, mom, now me and my brother, I always throw him under the bus. I love him, though. He he, uh, <laughs> he cracks me up when me and him talk sometimes. He, um, for me and him, we, we're about the same. Neither one of us, one of us no hairy than the other. And, uh, but here he's telling you, hey, Esau, Esau, Esau's a hairy man. And and mom, I'm yeah, I don't have that much hair. So he he goes on a little bit more. He said, Mom, my father peradventure will feel me. Mom, hey, Papa's gonna he gonna he gonna feel me. You know how he like to grab hold of people? And he shall seem to him as a deceiver. Soon as he be, he gonna sit there like, dude, you ain't you ain't you not Esau, you Jacob, you deceiver. So he's telling his mom what pre-telling the mom what gonna happen if he do this. He pre-telling her, which a lot of people there sit there and already say what somebody gonna do. And it says this. It says, including it shall bring a curse upon me. And not a blessing. So he's telling us straight up, Mom, this was gonna happen. You, we do this, this was gonna happen. He gonna curse me and not bless me. And this is what we gotta remember. 
because this deceiver is talking about he's going to beguile him. Curse is making, when he cursing, and we want to understand what that actually means, curse. What a curse actually is. It's a bind utterance. Bind is something on earth. It's a bind utterance, a bitter end on what, what curse actually meant. That's what that actually means. So he's talking about, hey, it will bring a bitter end upon me. That's all he's saying. He's going to bind the utterance on me, and he's going to have a bitter end on this. That's all he's saying to her. So Rebecca, the mom, she 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 spoke on that. She she going to talk to him. As they talking, he said, and his mother said unto him, upon me be that bitter end. Upon me be that bitter end my son. So she's in there and it's going to be on me. She said, only obey my voice and go fetch me them. Boy, you just go get those two, those two goats. You bring it here and let that bitter end be on, be on me. You just do what I told you. I don't, you, you, some of us know our older parents, we, I done took and told you. Yeah, I know some people know what I'm saying when I say that. So they say, oh, he talking crazy. No, a lot of people, parents, talk with that language I have took and told you I don't know how that works out but I absolutely know what that meant even when I was a kid I knew what that meant and I knew to do it when they say I done took and told you I know what that mean because if you don't know what it mean they put some belt behind it I promise you you will know what that mean I promise you that but that's what he, she telling him what to go do Verse 14, it says, and he went and fetched and brought them to his mother because she then took and told him. And his mother made savory meat. So now she already made the bread such as his father loved. So she knew this. So now in verse 15, it says, and Rebecca took goodly raiment. And we need to know what that is. We need to just know what that is. As Bible, not as what they <laughs> they tell you all this other stuff but goodly raiment and we can put them both together goodly raiment means just pleasant clothing he has something that he something that he liked to wear that's more pleasantly cool this is all it says so goodly raiment of the eldest son which is telling you the elder that's the eldest son Esau and it says which were with her in the house and put them upon Jacob her younger son. So she done dressed him all up. I know some of you guys, I know some of the boys I know, you know, same how your mother, cause my mother used to do me. I know she, I know some of y'all mother did y'all. She did, they're, they're, they're dressing you when you was a kid, dressing you. And then they'll lick their finger and straighten out your eyebrows. They'll lick their finger, they'll put that spit on their finger and they'll straighten out your eyebrows and lick their fingers and get that little, uh, crustaceans off your off your cheeks i know some of you guys know what i'm talking about but she dressed this son she she put it on him and then it says and she put the skins of kids of the goats upon his hands so those skins she put up on his hand and upon the smooth of his neck why she did that we don't know but i guess that to make the feel on the outs on the outer side of that when you look at the inner side of that that still had that feel of skin, had a skin of, you know, of flesh. So that's how you have to look at it, because it says she put the skin of the kid, of the goats that, that he had killed. So it was inside out, so the hair side was on his neck, but the outside of it was was the showing out part. So when the father, if he felt them on his neck or his hand, they had a more rougher feel. It don't feel like Jacob, it feel more like Esau. Is what she did. And it says, and she gave the savory meat. So she gave the bread and you see this and keep showing up, including the bread, which he, uh, she had prepared into the hand of her son, Jacob. And what happened? It says, 
And he came into his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am. Who art thou, my son? And here's where the ball game starts. Here's where everything cranks up at. And Jacob said this. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. Full thought, what they want to hold on to. Full thought on what people say he was a trickster, which is still not the truth. And he says, I have done according to thy baddest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison that my soul may bless me. So I'm going to show you something again where people mix up, they lie and tell you a lot of stuff that's not of the truth because this all was over upon a lentils, a pot of lentils, which is seeds, one, and they just call them beans, but they're a bunch of little seeds. All a pot of lentils is, is seeds, but we're going to look at which it has a spiritual side to that. The main thing is he had that. And we know Esau sold his inheritance for that pot of seeds. So let's look at this all together and make sure there ain't no 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 craziness going on. We're gonna look at Genesis chapter twenty five and we're gonna pick it up at thirty one. And actually it's already highlighted. But it says and Jacob said on said, Sell me this day thy birthright. We need to understand what that means. We need to understand what that actually means. And so, again, I'm just doing more unhighlighting and highlighting today. So we need to know what birthright means. Actually, we can even find out what that means. But birthright don't mean nothing but an inheritance. He says, sell me this day thy inheritance. That's all it's really saying. Nothing more, nothing less. But do now you know it functionally what it says. And when we see sell, sell mean to exchange. So he said, so Jacob said, exchange with me this day thy inheritance. That's all he actually said. <laughs> That's all he said. In a nutshell. That's all he said. Why? Because it's saying the same identical thing. Word for word in paleo. Because the inheritance is functionally which the terms is of a firstborn. Is the firstborn will inherit the thing. Verse 32 it says this. This is why Esau ended up having a problem. Esau said, remember, I am at the point to die. Including what profit shall this inheritance do to me. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's why this is so important. In fact, um, let's, let's get some clarity here. I want to get some clarity here. Let's, let's go over here to Hebrews. I want to show you something here to where we can understand it together. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16, This is where he this is where Esau messed up at. It says, Least there be any fornicator or profane person comparing Esau. Now that guy said Esau was a good guy. He said he was a bad guy, but he was a good guy. But the same thing is it's talking about Esau. For one morsel of bread sold his his inheritance. See, that's what Esau did. Esau sold his inheritance. So it's impossible for Jacob who had tricked Esau because we see right here Esau he said sell me exchange me your inheritance Esau said remember I'm at the point to die what profit shall this birthright this inheritance do to me and what did he do what did he do and it says and Jacob said swear unto me this day and he swear unto him 
and he sold his inheritance unto Jacob. But if you listen to people, even that guy that um, Ozan, they'll tell you he tricked Jake, Esau. Where did he trick Esau? Esau wasn't tricked at all. See, people want to tell you like he buff he made Esau come off like a buffoon or he seen where he can fool Esau. He didn't try to fool Esau. That's the whole point of this. People will sit there and tell you they'll concoct all kind of stuff. They'll stop and just say, oh, no, he did this to Esau. He did that to Esau. No, he didn't. Esau saying out his own mouth. What profit shall this birthright do to me? And it's telling you, a profane person, but he gets better. Watch this. We want to look at verse 17. It says, for ye knew how that afterwards, when he went, so let's look at, when afterwards, when Esau, we just put Esau there because that's what we're talking about would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Why? Because he was found a fornicator and a profane person. It didn't mean nothing to him. It says, for he found no place of remembrance. He's not righteous. Remember that? Those people, they, they, they be, they'll be remembered. So I know we remember that. That's why, that's why I laid all that in the front. To where now we can't sit there and say, oh, well, what about, no. He said, no, they're going to be, they're going to be a remembrance. That's a remembrance there. You see, and saying it right here. Remember, though he saw it carefully with tears. I don't care how you seek it. Many people are going to sit there and get on their knees. As soon as, soon as we get out of this, or they look at this, this teaching. They're going to get on their knees and God, I'm sorry, I'm this and that. He said, there is no forgiveness. Today or after. That's why I say it's so important to watch who you learn from. That's why it's so important. If you don't know the scriptures and you sitting under false doctrine, you need to keep your mouth shut because we have so many people out there that teach us and no, don't know that had the slightest idea what a precept is. And it's telling you clearly here. Once he figured it out, Esau figured out what that birthright was later. He figured it out because it says, at least, any, <clears throat> at least there be any fornicator or profane person compared as Esau for one more so me sold his birthright, sold his inheritance. Now, for ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He found out what it was. He still was rejected. Even though he saw it carefully with tears. It doesn't matter at that point. So these are the things that we have a problem with. These things we have a problem with. So the same thing is what, what happened with um, Esau now. When you go back up here and look at verse 27, it says this. It says, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, and this man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelt in tents. But the problem still becomes this right here. This is where the problem is, is what made Rebecca act out and do things that people didn't understand. Because it says, Esau, Isaac promised Esau, because he did eat of the benzin. <clears throat> However, Rebecca promised Jacob. That's what the issue is. This is where all the issues is. Rebecca knew where the inheritance was going. The same as Sarah was promised ahead of time at an old age, and she laughed at. It. Actually, let's, let's 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 do better yet. Let's do better yet. We're gonna go to Genesis. One second. I want to make sure we clearly understand this all together. Genesis chapter 18. 
Genesis 18. We're going to look at verse 10. And, and, um, it says, that, it says, and he said, and he's talking to, to Sarah now. He said, and he said, certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. In lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it. See, now she heard something. The same as Rebecca heard Isaac talking to Esau. And she heard it. She, she heard it at the tent door, which was behind him. She heard it. And she laughed. I'm talking about, well, she had pleasure even in her son, her husband, Abraham, also. See, she, she didn't think that was true. You mean, how, how is this going to happen? I'm old. He's old. No, no, this is not going to happen. I'm way past the time of my life to, to, to bear children. So I already know this is not going down. In fact, uh, look at Genesis uh, chapter 21. Now, she's sitting there. She don't believe this. Even though Christ is telling them this, she don't believe it. Look at verse 20, Genesis 21, verse 2. It says, For Sarah conceived, when he returned, she conceived and bare a son in his old age at the set time which God has spoken unto him. So it actually happened. Yeah, I know I know she's sitting there like, I can't believe. Abraham, I don't know what's going on. So the statement stands. The statement stands. See, a lot of us like to get in the way. Yes, Sarah. Sarah got in the way of God, made some mistakes. She got in the way of God. And she said, okay, well, I'm going to put Hagar there so he can have a child. And then the child still had to be sent away. Isaac wanted to put Esau there. And Rebecca said, I'm going to do something else done by these women done by these women based on trying to make sure they're going to help God they're going to help God do whatever he needs to do and seeing the same thing as um, we see this here we look at scripture as a whole and as we go through you always remember this in Ezekiel chapter 21 in verse 27. And Christ says this and he makes this unequivocally clear to us. He says, I will overturn. I will sit there and I will change people. Kill, destroy. Bring another one kill, destroy. I will overturn, kill, destroy, and bring up another one. I will overturn, I will kill, destroy, and bring up another one. It, including it shall be no more until he comes who right it is. Until I get what I want, I'm going to continue to do what I do. Until I get the ones I want. The Most High God will continue to do this. Because Jacob, when people call him Jacob a trickster, a deceiver, a mocker, a, a scoffer, is what they're doing. Showing that with contempt. As with Esau, as we remember in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. Because Esau is a profane person. Some should be seeing the point. Even as when people look at different doctrines, seeing the inheritance that belonged to Jacob that they call the deceiver. So I want you to remember something as we go through and we starting to wrap this up. I want you to remember something. And this I want you to pay very, very close attention to. Very close attention to this. And I want to make sure we're writing this down. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiasticus. Um, 
Uh, we're going to go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 44. Chapter 44, and we're going to look at that one. In verse 23. I want you to pay attention to this. He says, I have, I made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He was a knowledge in him in the blessing and gave him a heritage. He gave it to Jacob. Who? God. He gave it to Jacob. And Jacob did something that was unique, which is really, which is really a trip. Why you sitting there, you, we trying to ride on the salvation of, on a man we call a trickster. Now we see in the point, people will sit there and tell you, okay, we have salvation. We got salvation. We got salvation. The salvation is coming through Jacob, the trickster you guys call. And he divided his portion among 12 tribes. Did he part them? This is clear. This is clear. In fact, get the complete background on, on Jacob. Watch, watch what he says here in, in Isaiah. In Isaiah, he says something. Isaiah chapter 41. We're going to go down there. We're going to see what out of the mouth of Isaiah says. Isaiah says this, and Christ is speaking out of the vessel of Isaiah. He says this. He says, but thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So again, Christ is talking and he's telling you right up front who is his. And we have so many issues with people lying on people in here. And they, they tell a lot of lies on, on Jacob. A lot of lies is told on Jacob. And they tell you that, um, Israel, we know, do know, is a servant of God, including the Spirit of God has chosen Jacob. Rebecca didn't choose. God did. Not Isaac. God chose him. And he's from the seed of Abraham. But the other, another part where people lie on this man about, they say this man wrestled with God. He wrestled with God. I'm talking about, we can't make this up because people will say it all day long. You say, yeah, you wrestle with God. How can this man wrestle with a spirit? I want you to think about that. How can he wrestle? And then he prevailed. To show you the stupidity that's in this. Let's, actually, let's look at something. I'm going to show you why they have lied on this man. They, they, they make him more than man. They make him more than man. That's why you got men out here thinking they God. They thinking they got because now they think they can wrestle with God and, and 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 actually win. And then they believe they can win the, the war with God. Okay, and we're gonna look at Genesis chapter twenty thirty two, and we're gonna look at verse twenty four. We're gonna we're gonna look at this, and I'm gonna show you the lie that's taught. The lie that's taught in churches today. It says, "And Jacob was left alone." And there wrestled a man. You don't say a God. He wrestled a man. And we're going to find out a couple of other keys in here to make it even clear. He wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. He wrestled with a man, not God. But it gets better. It says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against Jacob, that's all this is saying, he touched the hollow of his thigh, including the hollow of Jacob's thigh, was out of joint. So it went out of joint on whatever he did to Jacob on doing that as he wrestled with him, as he wrestled with Jacob. As he wrestled with Jacob. But it gets better. Oh, it gets way better than this. It gets way better than this. So he see he can he can overcome Jacob. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. It says, and he said, let me go for the day, for the, for, for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. So Jacob was saying, no, dude, you got to bless me first. 
for me. I'm going to make you say Annie. You're going to bless me first. So he says this. This is how you know it. It ain't, it ain't Christ. Watch what he says. Here. He says, and said unto him, what is thy name? What? Wait a minute. What is thy name? I'm only pausing for a fact. <laughs> I'm only pausing for a fact. This, I'm gonna, yeah, this, 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 this here. Let's, let's look at I want to show you something. Let's look at something. We're going to look at a couple of pieces and make sure we're all, all on the same page. Exodus chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 4. It says, and when the Lord saw that he had turned aside, talking about Moses, he called unto him out of the midst of the bush, Moses, Moses. This, this guy asking him, what, what's your name? He called out of the bush and said, Moses. This guy saying, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. But he's God. That's what they teach. He don't know Jacob's name. But we're going to see how this all works out. You're going to see what happens. Let's go a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more. Because you're going to see what's going to happen. And hopefully... Uh, you have some people sitting here and telling, oh no, this, this, because hopefully they don't, so they won't get embarrassed. So hopefully they won't get embarrassed on this alone. So we're going to look at something. Watch what he says here. He says, thy name should be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For comparing a prince have thy power with God, including with men, thou hast prevailed. This is what he's saying. Now, Jacob want to know his name. Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? Now, the same thing is God knew who Moses was. But it's the same thing is what people look over and we're going to go here. The same thing what we're going to see here. That God, God don't ask people their name because he know who you are. He, he knew you from the womb. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 35. We're going to start at verse 10. And he's talking to Jacob again. Now he's talking to Jacob. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. You see, he ain't guessing. See, this is this is this is this is Christ talking now. Hey, your name is Jacob. Thy name should be no more called no called no more Jacob. He ain't asking what his name is. He said, no, Jacob. Your name called Jacob. He said, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. You see, it's not complex. This guy didn't know who his name was. God said. You don't see over here. And he said, let me go before daybreak. He said unto him, what is your name? You don't see where it said, and God said, what is his name? Over here, telling you. God said, hey, that name is Jacob. But he goes on more. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. You don't see that over here. I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Then what did you see over here? Now we now we now we running into some a whole nother ball game. But people have lied on this man. People have made this man superhuman. This is the problem we run into. And now we're going to find out a few other things about Jacob. Because Jacob, the name, means surplanner. That's what the name means. Surplanner. And you see, he prevailed. That's why he says, thy name is surplanner. Thou should be called no more the surplanner. That's what he's saying here. Your name is surplanner. That's all he's saying. 
Don't look at the name nor what the function is. It should be called no more search planning. But Israel should be that way. You know, are we getting this? Are we, are we understanding this? See, because I'm going to tell you what he did. This is why it's so important to take our time and study. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to see something. We're going to look at this all together. In chapter 10, verse 8, it says, Above, when he said, Sacrifice an offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, it was offered by the law. It was offered by the law. Wow. <laughs> Above where it said he was called by the name Jacob, he offered his flesh as a burnt offering unto God. He offered that unto God. In fact, um, let's look at something. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 28. And we're going to look at this real good in verse 20. And it says this. This is the way he offered this. He started off in his flesh. Jacob said this. He says, and Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me, including will keep me in this way, keep in this, in this righteousness, in a way in that in 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 the in the way that I go, I will give and give me bread to eat, bread, knowledge to learn, and raiment to put on, put give me a covering, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, in shalom. Then the spirit of God be my God. He offered it up. He offered it up. So that's why we see here, and then this is what's going on with Jacob. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that may establish the second. That's all Jacob did. He surplanted this. That's why Jacob prevailed. He surplanted this. He removed the works of the flesh and he surplanted with the power of Israel. And he prevailed. I'm telling you right here, all, all together, right there, all together with no no complications and he tells us that's why he says this in verse 11 and the most high said to him that's why i said it i am god almighty be fruitful and multiply a nation including a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins that's why he's saying that that's why he's saying this in fact um let's look at a little bit more of this to tie in a little bit more in Isaiah chapter 44 Isaiah 44 yeah we're going to look at this prophet Isaiah 44 in verse 2 it says thus said the Lord I have made thee that's how you know your name including form thee from the womb ye know your name before you come which will help thee which he did fear not Oh, Jacob, oh, Sir Planet, he needs you to change. He needs you to switch. That's why Jacob was called a Sir Planet, the way you can physically see this. But we're going to see that a little bit better. And it says, my servant whom thou, Jeshron, <laughs> you need to know what that's talking about, whom I have chosen. Wow. Because the Spirit of God formed Jacob, chosen Israel, chosen the ways of Israel. So you have to be doing the ways of Israel. You have to be doing the ways of Israel. If you're not, you're not Israel. Not as though the word of God has taken that effect because they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. The ways of Israel is the way you have to go. And people just saying, just got to be baptized and this and that, and you're saved. That's a lie. Because you have to know exactly what this is talking about. In fact, so I want you to think about this as we close in. I want you to think about something. We're going to look at this. We're going to go to Mark. And this is going to clearly tell you what's happening here. In Mark chapter 3, 
Verse 24. Verse 24. You remember this and never forget this. Actually, why I keep stop? Yeah, let me just do it this way. It says, if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. What I'm saying is this, and what this scripture is saying is this. If Jacob is a trickster, then the kingdom of God where this salvation rests on cannot stand. It's impossible. But people are telling you out of their own mouth. It should be a, I'm telling you, you should be highly upset when someone tell you that because they call in this man, a deceiver. And it's telling you right here, Christ is telling you out of his own mouth. If a kingdom be divided against itself. So the same thing as they, Sit there, and you got some of them guys from the from the Church of Christ. They come over, and they used to try to call us brothers. No, you're you're not my brother, and that's none of them. It's not my brother. The adversaries, and we are divided. They on one side, we on another side. This is what anybody, any Christian who believes Jacob is a trickster, you're part of Satan's clan. I don't care who you are. This is the way he, he, he goes. And if a kingdom is divided, it cannot stand. And it says, including if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Are you, are you understanding what this is going on? Actually, let's, let's look at a little bit more in Genesis. I'm just put these two together. Let's go to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 49, just so we can have a, a entire outlook at this. Genesis 4, it says, Jacob called his sons and gathered, and he gathered uh, the, uh, yourselves together that I may tell which shall befall you in the last days. Because there's going to be some separating. So he want to tell you what's going to happen in these last days. Because there's going to be some separating. So he's going to give you warning about that. And he's telling you, Gather yourselves together, ye sons of Jacob, of the flesh, including hearken unto Israel, your father. You have to do this because if not, it's two different ones. It's two sides. It's two sides to this. So that's why he's telling us that. He says, if the house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. It's impossible. That's an impossibility. And now he goes on more. He tells us this in verse 26. It says, Including if Satan rise up against himself, including be divided, he cannot stand, have, but have an end. So how can two people sit there, walk and agree, and one saying Jacob's a trickster and one is saying he's not? The Bible don't say Jacob was a trickster, but they say he was. They say he was a deceiver. You've seen that. See, lying lips are an abomination to the Most High God, and they will not see the kingdom of God. See, Jacob, as I said, making it very clear, Jacob means surplanter, which means surplanter. And I'm going to give you the full understanding of this right here. On these last few verses, you're going to see the entire part on why he says this. And most people... They, they're trying to get the understanding of it and try to understand it. And some people just go through it and they just want to sit there and pump themselves for their own lives. But in, in second degrees, chapter six in verse eight, it says this to where we can actually get the better understanding. It says, for he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob held Jacob hand held first the heel of Esau. The reason why we're going to find out why this is actually done. Because Esau is of the flesh. Jacob is the surplanter to be heir, take possession of flesh 
in the works of it is changing it to establish the second following that is the spirit. Esau is the works of flesh. Jacob is he that followeth. You're going to see he said it right here because it says Esau is the end of 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 uh, other world, which is which is flesh. Jacob is the beginning that followeth. Talking about one going to the other. One going to the other. Same thing. You go back over here to, to verse Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8. It says what? It says above when he said, sacrifice of offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin of what is not, neither did had neither had his pleasure therein, which he offered by the law. You see this here. You see it. It says what? Then said he, Jacob, I lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first of the flesh, holding on to it, and said he established the second. That's the whole focus of everything. In fact, when you go back to 10.5, you see here, it says, Wherefore, when he said unto the world, when, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice or offering, not what is not, but a body thou hast prepared me. He's making sure this is clear. It's not complex, but so many people is caught up in flesh is the problem that we have. Solomon says this wisdom of Solomon says this, and we're going to put them all together and look at this wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to look at chapter 18. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 15. So I'm telling you, the almighty word leap down out of heaven, out of thy royal throne, comparing a fierce man of war into the, into, into the, into the midst of a land of destruction, the body that was all set for destruction. This body is set for destruction. It's got a, it got a death date. And it's telling you, we need to sacrifice something. So Esau is the end of all flesh in this works of it. That's why when he saw it with tears, it, he was profane. These things is real. These things is going to happen. And the main thing is when you let a man can talk you out of something such as that. And you see all scripture here. I'm not sitting there to show it down and then just, just start talking about something to try to make you convince yourself within yourself. I'm showing you scripture, which is things they cannot do because if you let precepts control everything, that's letting God speak and he's going to show you what the truth is. So that word had to come down because through Esau, it was weak through the flesh. It's telling you this. That's why we like Paul. Paul chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, we're going to look at verse 3. It's telling you right here why the word came down. It says, for what the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own servant, the word. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That's what he did, set in the land for, for destruction. What Jacob did. So what is so what is going on here? Yeah, I wish I had told a parable. And I want you to show you this parable, just to show it to you, just one statement of this parable, the way we can remember. And get a chance, go go through it and look at it. I want you to pay attention to it, but also have a good understanding of this. In Luke chapter ten, we're gonna pay attention to verse thirty. We're gonna pay attention to verse thirty. And I said this once before in the Zoom area, and you really need to understand what's going on here. It says, and Yahweh I answered, said, a certain man went down from, he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. You need to understand what both of those places mean functionally. It says, including fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. God said he chosen Jacob in the covenant rest on Jacob 
and he divided that inheritance between his 12 sons. But you have Christians and people such as them telling you they have the covenant. Leaving you half dead because you want to believe them and thinking they're going to revive you. This is the problem. And I, I'm going to leave you with this and get a better understanding of what's happening here. So when we look at Mark, um, well, we can look at Matthew chapter 12 and verse 32. As we said from the beginning, whosoever speaketh against Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven, neither in this world, neither the world to come. So the main thing is this. The main thing is this. And clearly understand where we're coming from with that. If you're sitting under any of these men, that teach such things as that, as that, Jacob is a trickster. And you agree with those things. You can close your book up if you've spoken those things. Because I'm telling you on scripture, they're teaching you of another God. They're teaching you of a whole nother God. And let me see, um, I'm getting ready to um, put the link for the back area. So one second, to for the Zoom area, to where they can come in. So just give me one minute where we can open this up. And then we can um, take any question and answer that you guys may have. So just... Uh, So I got that part, one second. So if you, so if you refresh your screen, you'll see, um, you'll see where you can come into the back area and uh, I'll be back there in one second and, and hopefully that you guys go through this, but you can, if you refresh your screen, you'll see the link to go into Zoom. And then um, I'm getting ready just to send this over to my mom because she goes through the phone. So I just want to make sure she has the codes for that. But what I want to do, I, we're going to pick up on Romans tomorrow. We're going to have Romans going on tomorrow. And, and Romans will be taught on um, King James Bible University site. But as I said, um, if you go through anybody who teach such things, please understand where you're coming from. Because many people are going to look for it and they're thinking they're going to have salvation that way. And that's not the truth. You're literally sitting there, you sealed your place for what you thought you had and you don't have. So with that, I say on tomorrow, I'll be looking forward to, to um, each and every one of you guys. And so until then, I say to each and every person, so until next time. I say, shalom.